A millennia-old love affair with this precious beverage has rightly earned it the title as the drink of the gods. Wine. Though requiring a painstaking and perpetually refined creation process, the product is well worth the work. The humble origin of this fine drink is the grape. Plucked from its mother vine and crushed beneath human feet, the unassuming grape is transformed into a sumptuous fruit of labor. Though the grape's end is gruesome, its life is pampered. The grapevine is nurtured with the utmost attention and care so as to make it a robust bearer of delectable fruit. But we aren't the only ones drawn to this delicious vitus. Small, numerous, and persistent, an unlikely army has been vying to claim the noble fruit for its own. Damaging grapevines, wreaking havoc on vineyards across the globe, and threatening the wine industry, these small creatures have proved themselves to be formidable forces of destruction. Though we have won many battles against vineyard diseases and pests, the war against our tiny nemesis is far from won. Nevertheless, various means of controlling damaging populations of vineyard diseases and pests exist and continue to be improved. The implementation of different management strategies that take into account the nature of the pest or disease, the control technology, the ecological context, and economic costs is integral to developing a successful vineyard management system. The disastrous effects on vineyards and the wine industry that a pest can cause were realized in the 19th century when a small aphid, Phylloxera, was introduced to Europe from America, devastating European vineyards and crippling the European economy. Before the aphid arrived in Europe, Phylloxera existed on grapevines in North America. But the native grape species, having evolved resistance to the pest, were not severely affected by it. The trouble started in 1862, when some native vines from North America were brought to France, carrying phylloxera with them. The European grape species Vitis vinifera was not resistant to the aphid, and death to the vine resulted from the damaging root munching done by the bug. Soon, entire vineyards in France were devastated. The destruction quickly spread around the world. The epidemic was halted by the development of resistant rootstocks, in which the European Vitis vinifera was grafted onto the rootstock of the resistant American vines. In effect, this hybrid plant retains the superior taste of the European species with the phylloxera root resistance of the American species. Today, the majority of wines are produced from Vitis vinifera vines grafted onto the resistant rootstocks of the American Vitis estivalis. However, there still remains the risk of phylloxera evolving into a strain capable of damaging the resistant American rootstock. Phylloxera wasn't the only gift given to European vines from North America. North American vines also introduced many fungal diseases to which Vitis vinifera is not resistant. The most problematic of these today are powdery mildew and bunch rot. Powdery mildew is one of the most important and widespread fungal diseases of grapevines, causing serious yield loss and a decrease in yield quality. Affected grapevines are usually in warm and dry climates. Presence of the mildew is indicated by white powdery patches on leaves and berries. Infected leaves dry out and drop. The infection of green shoots results in the characteristic dark lesions on canes. Infection of berries causes cracking or splitting of the berry skin to occur, increasing the risk for infection by other pathogens. Bunch rot, caused by the plant pathogen Botrytis cinerea, is yet another widespread disease affecting vineyards worldwide and leading to significant crop loss. If berries are infected when young and remain in wet conditions for a length of time, they rot and infection quickly spreads to surrounding berries in the cluster. Infection of leaves leads ultimately to necrotic lesions. However, Botrytis cinerea can also enhance the quality of wine if mature berries are infected and contained in controlled climate conditions. In this case, the infection, referred to as noble rot, confers a desirable taste to the wine. Arthropod pests which include insects and spiders, pose another serious threat to vineyards worldwide, which can damage vines by feeding on them, serve as vectors of disease, or cause damage to the plant, which subsequently opens it to infection by other pathogens. The grapeberry moth is a prominent pest of cultivated grapes. Larvae can cause yield loss by damaging flowers, buds, and berries when feeding, resulting in injured berries that prematurely ripen, split, and shrivel. Additionally, feeding on the berries produces open sites that can lead to infection with Botrytis cinerea, the pathogen that leads to bunch rot. The grape leafhopper pest poses a potentially devastating risk to vineyards worldwide because it vectors disease and bacteria. 
The recently emerged glassy-winged sharpshooter leafhopper poses a serious threat to vineyards in California because the leafhopper vectors the bacteria Xylella fastidiosa, which causes Pierce's disease of grapevines, and because this disease-spreading pest can travel long distances. Xylella fastidiosa produces water stress in grapevines by blocking xylem vessels, resulting in symptoms including leaf marginal necrosis, leaf marginal scorching, and declines in vine vigor, which ultimately lead to the plant's death. Pierce's disease has resulted in widespread damage to California vineyards, largely because of the high degree of vineyard monocultures, which render grapevines especially susceptible to damage by pests and disease. Exacerbating the problems in California vineyards is the use of large amounts of pesticides, which may reduce pest populations initially, but subsequently leads to the proliferation of pest strains that are resistant to the pesticides. In effect, this poorly managed system of disease and pest management results in a large population of resistant pests and diseases that do more damage to the vineyard than before pesticide treatment. The lack of success of this old system of disease and pest control combined with a new concern for the environmental effects of management strategies, a desire to mimic the balancing self-regulation of an ecosystem, and a growing body of knowledge concerning the biology of diseases, pests, and crops, led to the development of integrated pest management, called IPM, in the 1970s. This approach allows for viable, effective management of pests and diseases by considering the whole ecosystem in which the vineyard functions, the roles of the farmer, pests, disease organisms, predators, and environment, as well as available control tools and economic limits. Importantly, this approach uses information gained from the latest research to modify or improve existing management strategies, as well as develop new, more effective ones. The foremost IPM strategies include biological control, natural enemies or beneficials, biopesticides, refuges or ecological compensation areas, cover cropping, semiochemicals, and weather monitoring. The first of these strategies, biological control, attempts to re-establish some tolerable level of population regulation of diseases or pests by introducing natural enemies including predators, parasitoids, pathogens, or competitors. The defining factor of biological control is that the diseases or pests are reduced to levels that remain in equilibrium with its biocontrol agent in a self-sustaining manner. This strategy can be an effective, inexpensive means of controlling pest or disease populations with natural enemies. However, careful consideration of the ecosystem population is required in order to ensure that levels of the disease or pest are maintained in an equilibrium state with the introduced agent and to ensure that the introduced agent does not negatively disrupt levels of other organisms. The second IPM strategy, the introduction of natural enemies or beneficials into the vineyard population, can prove to be a highly effective means of pest management, especially for arthropods, whose natural enemies range from small pathogens to large insect-eating animals. Such a management strategy is beneficial because the use of natural enemies to control pests instead of harsh chemicals or pesticides reduces the risk of resistant pest strains evolving and can reduce the risk of harming other non-threatening organisms in the vineyard that may occur with pesticide use. Additionally, with this more natural pest management strategy, there is less concern over toxicity and food contamination associated with use of chemical pesticides. However, the cost of having to reintroduce large amounts of natural enemies into the vineyard can be one drawback to the strategy.